everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this easel card. And the reason I've done one, I know I've done them before, but I wanted to show off this beautiful daffodil die. Now, daffodils are my favourite flower and it is extremely rare that I ever find a die or a nice big stamp of a daffodil. So I'm going to show you the magazine in a moment. But I was super excited when I saw that this one was coming out and um, as soon as I got it, I actually got it last week but I was visiting my nan for a week so I wasn't able to be in my craft room so I've been itching to do this card. And I love it and I thought an easel card shows this off really nicely. Um, I will link up here all my other easel cards because I'm always aware that there's new people joining my channel. So those of you that have never made one or even heard of one, this is what they look like. Now they fold completely flat and you can see even when that's closed up, so this is a six by six card, but when that's closed that will look lovely when the person takes it out of the envelope and then it's just got a fold there and it will clip in behind this raised little piece at the front which has got the happy birthday on. And then under here I've got a blank piece of card for you to stamp and write your message or you could do something here if you wanted to or alternatively you've got all the room on the backs here as well so lots of space to to add more bits and pieces but I just wanted the focus to be on these daffodils and I just think it looks really really pretty so put that one to one side this is the magazine so this is issue 188 of Simply Cards and Papercraft I must admit this month the UK magazines have been amazing. I brought four and um, usually I maybe buy one or two but I've brought four this month and I've just loved all of the stamps and the dies that we receive. So this particular one is by Altenew and I think that's why it looks so great because Altenew always do wonderful layered stamps or dies and you can see there all the different parts to it. So each daffodil has four dies so there's one two three four dies that make this daffodil and then for the the leaf here and the stem you've you've got these one two three so really nice again value for money this was 6.99 and um i know it's a it's an ultra new die but it's a daffodil and like i said i i've never seen them so if anybody can point me in the direction of daffodil dies please do because i i'm a huge fan of daffodils I will link this magazine and everything else that I use today in my blog as always and there's heaps of um, inspiration, some beautiful cards have been made by the design team as well using this die. So I've already gone ahead and cut some of them out. I'm going to cut one with you um, but this is how they look. So we'll do that one because that's the reverse. Oh no they're both, yeah that was the reverse one. If I just bring it up there, isn't that so pretty and detailed? absolutely love them. So I because it's plain that um, cardstock that I'm using, I just flipped this over to so I've got a mirror image so I can have one that way and one that way. Or as in this card, I've done one facing out that way and one facing out, but this one I'm going to have them facing in. And then i done this one, but I wasn't happy with the colours. That back, kind of, it's more of a grey cream, it just didn't look right at all. Whereas that one, it's a real nicer yellow um, cream, so that one looked nice. But they show you the sequence and the colours that they recommend. Personally for me, I love really nice yellow daffodils, so that one there is the perfect kind of colour for me. So I'm going to do a real yellow one today. But the papers that they you can download are here. Let me just bring them in. So I went ahead and printed these papers. Not all of them. There was one that I haven't done. It's a bit psychedelic and blurry and it was actually playing with my eyes and I, I just thought I don't think I'm really going to use that one but all the rest I've, I've downloaded and printed and love them. So today's card I'm going to use the Stripe which is beautiful, really nice. It's so We've got the sun shining at the moment in the UK and it's February and it just feels really nice to kind of come out of that gloomy, you know, January and December kind of weather. Um, although saying that they're saying we've got snow next week so who knows. So that's the stripe. That is this lovely star, or daffodil, I guess. They've tried to do like an abstract daffodil there, and that's what I've used for this one. The green is what I've used for the background here, and then you've also got this orange one here. So I've just printed all this on 300 GSM smooth cardstock. You just download the file, and it goes straight onto your laptop um, or your computer, and then just print it off. So I've got them for some more cards, um, along with these pieces here. But they show you a, you can, one of the other things you can print off is the sentiments and then there's also um, like a template and it has perfectly um, cut or printed squares of all different shades of yellow and that's the sequence of what they recommend you to cut them in. Um, let me just see if I can find it here. So down on the bottom here, 
this is what you can print off. So this is the paper and you can see there all those four colours and they've got each of the dyes on the different colours. So if you are thinking, oh gosh, I don't know if I get the right kind of yellows and oranges and things like that, just have a look at that and that's um, it's a download as well. And you don't have to buy this magazine to have the download, you just go onto their website. Again, I'll share all the links and you can download the papers. So even if you're you know, in parts of the world and you can't get this magazine, you can fussy cut because they also do a printable... Um, these ones here are all printed daffodils, so if you fussy cut them, you can still create these cards as well. So, like I said, good all round of that magazine. Okay, so I've already gone ahead and I've got my 6x6 card base. This is just a pre-made card base. If you don't have these, then you want a piece of 12x6, and along the 12-inch side you want to score at 6 inches and fold in half, and that gives you your card. Then, because we're making an easel card, I need to add one more score line. So. With your card folded in half and then top folding, so it folds this way here. This is our front, so this is this piece here, okay? We need to create this score line through the middle, okay? So with that front panel, pop it in here and it's scored there at six inches, which is correct. So you want to then do another score line at three. Okay, so I'm just scoring there at three inches and then fold that one in half. And now we have our easel card. So really, really easy. Do you like an easel card? get rid of that and then I've gone ahead and I've cut these already down so I've got this piece here which is going to go inside and this is a piece of five and three quarters by five and three quarters and you can see there I get a nice border and that's going to come over and I thought the stripes worked really well um, again with this style card and then these two pieces here are two and three quarters by five and three quarters and they are going to go on each of those side panels like so. You don't have to do the back one if you don't want to, but I think it's nice when that person opens up the card, you know, that's what they see, okay? So I'm going to go and get those all stuck down. Okay, so that's now all stuck down. Next, I'm going to die cut my ovals. So I'm going to use some of these scrap pieces. So I'll have to use that one there. So these are my fancy stitch ovals. These are the Tonic Studio ovals. So these are lovely because you get the scallop edge and then the straight edge. So I just used the first largest scallop edge there. Oh no, sorry, that was for the dark green. This is the straight that's going to go in there. So that one for that one. And then I just need to choose my green colour. So pull out these ones here. And so this is a paper, but I think I can get away. I don't really want to cut into. I'm going to use that for my stem. And I'm going to use that one there. Yeah, I think that one will work quite nice. This one will be a bit, little bit brighter. So I'm going to cut that one through this colour here. So I'm just going to get those all cut. Okay, so now that one is going to stick over the top there and I'm going to use some of my foam squares because I just want to give some dimension. You can see on that one there, that one is on some foam adhesive, so I'm just going to pop some on the back. Okay, so you can see now this is all coming together, so that's going to stick there. And then when that comes up, we'll have our happy birthday stamped with the same green border, just like we've got there. So now I'm going to make up the daffodil itself. So let's just move this out of the way. Use my little die cutting machine for this one. So these are all the pieces that you get. So there's your outline. There's your detailed centre part. Then you have this tiny little one here. All of your stems and this one here. So they're all your little detailed bits there, so you don't want to lose them, but you should have one, two, three, four for your flower, and then three for the leaf and the stem. Okay, so I'm going to grab all my yellows. So my main background one, I want to be a really nice bright yellow colour, so I'm going to go for this one here. In fact, that's maybe a bit too bright, because I do want it to match my papers. So yeah, I'm going to go for that one there, I think that's lovely. And then I'm going to go for a darker 
more orangey colour on top, so I'll probably use that one actually. Yeah, that's fine. And then I want a lighter, you can tell these are from the last one I made actually, that one. And then I think that one will work. Yeah, there we go. You just want three shades of yellowy orange colour, as you can see there, and even creams. Um, but play around because it even looks great with all different shades of pink or shades of blue. So, you know what I mean? You can, yeah, make them however you want. I don't really tend to follow the the guide that they give you, but that's just how I work. So I'm doing this freestyle. So I'm going to do that one first in that colour. Try and cut a few of these all at the same time. So that one is going to go on there. Then this darker orange here, trim that down a little bit, is going to go like so. And then I'm going to use this cream in there for this one. And then this one here, I'm going to have this last piece. Okay, so I can get them all cut through at the same time. Now on their own, they don't look like much at all, but it's all part of building it up, which is what Ultinu are obviously very good at. Um, and you can see there just how great it looks once it's all done. Next, I'm gonna, while I've got my dye machine here, I'm gonna cut out my stem and leaf so I'm gonna do that one there hang on a minute do I want them both dark yeah I'm gonna do both dark and then a lighter one so that one and then I'm gonna add this lighter green for the detail so again I'm changing it up a little here mind you though that one isn't gonna go so I think I kind of need to use no, I'm gonna go darker not lighter and keep that for the little frame for my sentiment because I want this to I want them to kind of match in terms of the stem so I'm gonna just add that bit there run this one through okay so there's those pieces done there so now we just need to build it now the easiest way that I do this when I'm using anything um, intricate is I just use a non-tacky glue. Let's get rid of all of that build up there. A non-tacky glue, and again, loads of you will know what I'm about to do now, but I just splodge it on the back of my hand. And this is my always my go-to, never fails, but you want a non-tacky, because you want it to dry completely clear and you know not be sticky. So there's my base. This one here, I'm just gonna dab over the top. And this way, you don't get any large bits of glue either, you just get a nice even amount and then you're just basically lining it up. Like I said, use the guide if you've not used done it before, they give you, but it will fit in there perfectly, like so. Now this one needs to go under, this is one thing I didn't, it needs to go under those three there. So I'm just going to use my pokey tool just to make sure that all gets covered and then carefully Again, you don't need it. You don't need a little bit of glue attached anyway. That one's going to go there, so you can just see that lifting up. And then this one here, pop down there. And then this one goes right over the top. You'll see the exact pattern of it below. But again, it does show you all this in the magazine. But now, if I bring that up, look at that lovely daffodil. Love it! <laughs> okay, so now we just need to build this piece here. So again, just a little bit of that wet glue. And I'll get to peel this all off the back of my hand once it's all dry. And then this goes literally from top to bottom. I'll just follow the curve of the leaf. And then that glue will dry clear in a minute. And then this piece here, so I want mine to be, so I'm going to have one that way, one that way. This one I'm going to have slightly higher, pop a little bit of this glue on the back there and pop it there like so and this one's going to come up higher and I think what I might do is stick this leaf on 
once I stick it on the actual thing because I want them to kind of oh mind you though I think I can do it now that's how it's going to look that's my kind of flourish so I'm going to stick that one down as well so you just want to pop a little bit of glue on the bottom just like so I'm going to have it quite hidden behind like that okay now what I've done is I've stuck this one and this one completely down onto this green piece and then this one here I've put some foam adhesive on the back of it again I just thought it was quite nice to just have that one kind of lifted up so I just pop one just across the back there like so and then I'm going to add a little bit more glue all the way along the back of that one because that's going to stick directly onto the paper so this one I'm going to put dead centre I'm as centred as I can, so about there. Make sure all the rest of it sticks down. And then these ones can just have glue all on the back. Again, you don't need too much, just, just enough. And then this one I'm going to have... Oh, hang on, I didn't think about that, did I? That's why I stuck these two down first. I'm going to just lift that one up slightly, bring it down a little bit, and have it just there. Perfect, and then this one here. So like I said, when you want to make a reverse one, you just flip the, the paper over because it's plain paper. So this one's facing in the opposite direction and that one is going to just clip under that one there. And any glue you might see will disappear. And then I've got my bow, which I've already gone and done. I'm going to use some of my silicon glue here. Pop a little bit on the back. And stick that right at the very bottom of the stem and look how pretty that topper is it's so cute so pop that one to one side now before I put this on I want to create my stopper so I've just got my stamp and my ink pad And then I'm just going to very, you can use your any dies that you might have, rectangle dies or your guillotine. I'm just using my long scissors here just to cut a nice frame. And then I'm going to use that same bright green. Both sides like so and then I've got my topper so let's just make sure that has all dried. Pop some foam on the back. Now it's entirely up to you where you want to stick it. So I generally go about halfway. And because I've got lines on this, I can keep it nice and straight. But you want that to kind of come about halfway across, like so. Like I said, it's up to you. If you want to come down further, you can. But I'm going to stick this one right about... I'm going to line it up with that orange one there. I think that's about right okay so now we've got our stopper and then I can stick this one there and it looks absolutely beautiful I love this so much so I'm going to just add some wet glue to half of this oval because you're only sticking half of it down so that the rest pops up close the card and stick this nice and centered and when it comes up there's your easel you can add some little you know um, sequins if you want I might add some nouveau drops or something here to to spit to fill that space but otherwise I think it looks absolutely beautiful look at them aren't they gorgeous really nice happy bright spring cards so yeah so that is my tutorial today a nice easel card showing off those beautiful daffodil dies in that magazine like I said all those links and everything I've used today will be shared over on my blog and um, yeah be back again next week thanks for watching bye